There are loved ones in the glory whose dear forms you often miss when you close your earthly story. Will you join them in their bliss? Will the the NVIDIA 8800 GTS. To me, there's something intangible about this card. It's not about the card's statistics or how fast it is or the looks. Okay, well, the looks help. To me, the 8800 GTS was larger than the sum of its components. It was an adventure, a door to a new world. This card was the eyes for my journey into many games that still hold a special place in my heart. Bioshock, Fallout 3, Empire Total War, Kerbal Space Program, Rust, DayZ, and even Civilization V. This card took me to places that I will never forget. I used this card until 2013 and never regretted a moment of it. But the 8800 GTS is turning 10 years old in November. Am I looking at this card through rose-colored glasses? Well, I don't think so. And uh, this is the actual card that I used, and it's still pumping out pixels to this day. I guess the real question is, can a nearly 10-year-old GPU still game? Is it practical? No. Is it better than a comparable, newer, used GPU of the same price? No, probably not. Is it better than a GT610? Eh, yeah, probably. Can it run Crisis? I don't know, let's find out. At 1024 by 768, the resolution I would have run this game with back in the day on medium settings, it runs pretty good. In fact, here are the settings for you to peruse. And with these particular settings, we see an average frame rate of 39 FPS with a max of 73 and a minimum of 27. The 8800 GTS I used was a 320 megabyte variant, however they came in 640 megabyte and eventually 512 megabyte variants. With more RAM, higher textures and resolutions would have been possible, even so, not too shabby for an almost 10 year old card. On Bioshock 720p high settings, the frame rates were fantastic with an 83 FPS average and a 120 FPS max with a very respectable 54 FPS minimum. Being limited to DX10 means this card won't be able to play the remastered version, however, who needs a remastered version when you can play the game on original hardware like the 8800? On Fallout New Vegas 720p high settings, we again see a really good 57 FPS average with a capped 60 FPS max, only ever getting down to 28 FPS when the death claws got cranky. This game looks and performs light years ahead of the Xbox 360, which is the original system that I played this game on. Portal ran great as well on this card. At 1080p, this game had a blistering 104 FPS average with a 144 max and a 68 FPS minimum. Kerbal Space Program, yet another game I played on this card. I recorded two separate benchmarks for this game, one at launch and one in space at 1024 by 768 on the high settings. Both performed admirably with the launch getting a 55 FPS average and with the space gameplay getting a 101 FPS average. This game has come an incredibly long way since I played it last with this card. Mm, good times. Speaking of good times, Civ 5 at 1080p performed quite well with an average of 43 FPS, a max of 59, and a minimum of 29. I spent considerably too much time playing this game. It just has a way of sucking you in. Well, now that we know how it performs in older games, how about some newer titles? How about CSGO? On CSGO at 720p high settings, we got a decent 60 FPS average with a 111 FPS while well, nothing much was going on and it only ever dropped down to 28 when the action got rough. And on League of Legends 1080p max settings, we got a very playable 70 FPS average with a 81 FPS max and it only ever dropped down to 64 FPS when all sorts of shit was going wrong. And finally, the last game that we tested was Rocket League 1080p on the performance setting. It actually handled this game alright with it only ever hitting a minimum of 32 FPS, with it reaching as high as 65. 
The game played at 49 FPS most of the time. Even on games such as this, the card performs very admirably. With all of the testing done, I can say with certainty that the 8800 GTS still holds a special place in my heart. I know I didn't really stress the card too much and that any DX11 title or higher simply won't run on this card, but the fact that this card, even after nearly 10 years, can still game with newer games is still quite remarkable. However, every good thing must come to an end, and after nearly 10 years of service, it's time to retire this old veteran with something a little newer. It's time to finally unseat it from its throne in the PCI port of my old Q6600 machine. Sleep well, old friend. Sleep well. One by one there, seats were emptied, and one by one, they went away Now the family Is parted Will it be Complete One day 